Okay. Awesome. We are recording. Welcome everybody to the call officially. My name is Eric Johnson, creator and CEO of Teamsy. And I'm very excited to be with you tonight to show you a little bit about Teamsy, how it works. Um, and, and here's kind of what I have planned for you. I'm going to show you Teamsy. I'll show you how to set it up for those of you who haven't used it. It's really easy to set up. It's, it's, it's made for people who aren't techie <laughs> like me. Um, it's really easy to set up. I'll show you how to do a power hour. Teamsy is built on the concept that you'll be able to get everything done in less than an hour a day. So I'll show you the workflows to just crank through those. Um, and we'll do a Q&A at the end. Before I get started, though, I want to teach you guys a little bit about relationship marketing, which is the system Teams is built upon. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of meat on that. And then we'll dive into the software. I'll show you how with the software you can apply the system. So um, let me just go ahead and share with you this really quick. Um, are you guys seeing my screen, my presentation? Okay, perfect. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good. So I want to talk to you first about, this is the topic, systemize your success with relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. So there's a couple pieces here. One is you got to have a system to follow, right? So I'm going to show you a real simple one that, that I've been teaching for 20 years. Um, and it's something you can duplicate. Relationship marketing is what we teach at Teamsy and what the system is built on. And I'm going to kind of share that with you guys. But basically, it means that you get to be authentic and real and not have to ever be a cheesy salesperson. Can I get an amen on that? A few of you guys were like, <laughs> amen on that. And then power hour boss means we're going to get it done in less than an hour. I've got four kids, a lot of things to do in the day. I bet you guys have stuff to do too, right? So you can build an incredible business by just being focused for a small amount of time. So just to kind of introduce myself a little bit more than my name, uh, my background is not actually in network marketing. Uh, my background is I've been a professional business coach and consultant for 20 years now. I can't believe it feeling old. I've got a little, I'm starting to pop gray, see, but it's, what is it? The, the gray hair is the crown of wisdom. Isn't that what they say? Something like that. So um, 20 years, I've been teaching people relationship marketing. And about uh, five years ago, we started Teams. I'll get into that in a second and got into the network marketing world. Um, but this is something that works with any kind of business. And I've worked with every kind of business owner you can imagine, teaching them how to build a relationship-based business. Um, what happened to me personally was about seven years ago, here's a shot of the fam. About seven years ago, I, um, I had this great career. I was loving it. I was making pretty good money. I live in Southern California, so I wanted to make a little bit more money. Can anyone relate to wanting to make a little bit more money? Yeah, everyone, right? I wanted to make a little bit more money, but I was kind of stuck at, in my career. I was at the top of my career right? There was really nothing more I could do. I couldn't take on any more clients. There wasn't any enough hours in the day. And I was kind of stuck at my income. Um, but the problem also was that I wanted to be with my family. I, would, I never saw them. Some of you guys can relate. Maybe you have a full-time job or you have a spouse who's, who's constantly working. And we used to joke about my kids. I only saw them in their pajamas. Um, when I left for work, they were in their pajamas. When I came home from work, they were back in their pajamas. And it was kind of like, you know, it was really, especially when my kids were little, the bigger ones, um, because the younger ones, I got to be there from the get-go because that's why we do this business, right? But I, my, my older kids, I never saw, when they were little, they didn't even want to hug me when I came home. They didn't know me. They didn't know me. And that's not what I wanted. You know, I wanted to be with my family. I wanted to have incredible relationships with them. I wanted to find a way to not only make more money, but be able to be with my family and be present for them on a daily basis. And so I saw the network marketing opportunity. I mean, it's a no brainer, right? You can, you can have your free time. You can build incredible income. What a great opportunity to be able to create a business or start a business basically with zero investment. I mean, you invest in a few products you're gonna use anyways. And so it was a no brainer to me. I saw, I saw that opportunity and said, I'm going to go for this. The challenge I had was when am I going to squeeze this into my day? I just didn't have any time, but I figured for a season, I could squeeze one extra hour a day into the business. So I started looking for tools where I could leverage my time. I knew exactly what I needed to do because I'd been teaching it for so many years. It was just a matter of getting it done efficiently. And I assumed such a huge industry as ours, there'd be great technology but there really wasn't anything that I could find. Um, especially, uh, you know, when I started, when we started building Teamsy, there was literally nothing. Um, there's been a few attempts since Teamsy's has taken off. People are like, oh, that's a good idea. We should build stuff too. But um, so long story short, I couldn't find anything. So I took some guys to lunch that I knew who knew how to do computer stuff. And I had a 
sketch. <laughs> I should show you guys the sketch. It's in a notebook over there on my bookshelf. I had a sketch of an idea of what we could build. And so we, we built it. And um, at the time I, I was new to network marketing. I wasn't even through my first year of network marketing yet. And I knew a few people that were kind of at my level. And I sent them a text message with a link and said, check this out, tell me what you think. Fast forward five years, we've had more than 150,000 network marketers use TeamZ. <clears throat> and it's just taken off by people discovering us randomly and sharing it with their teams. And it's been incredible. Uh, it's been incredible, um, humbling to, to serve all those people and help them build their business by relationship. Just to kind of give you an idea of results, people that are actively using Teamsy, they're averaging 21 new customers and nine recruits over 90 days. Okay, that's kind of the average for people that are using Teamsy regularly. 21 new customers and nine recruits over 90 days, which is not bad, not bad at all. So getting back to the topic here, relationship marketing, what is this? And you might hear this term, it's becoming a buzz where, you know, when I started coaching, um, when I started becoming, when I, when people were like, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a business coach. 20 years ago, everyone thought I was weird. Now everybody gets it, right? Same thing with relationship marketing. It's kind of a buzzword, but I want to really define this for you guys, because um, I think that people use this term and don't really understand the real meaning of it. First of all, relationship marketing is a philosophy of doing business that puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. It puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. There's the reason why people are skeptical about our industry. And that's because they feel like their friends are suddenly putting a sale ahead of the friendship, right? They want to get something from you. It makes people skeptical. We, I want you to know we're going to focus on the relationships and people first. Also, this is not an abstract feel-good concept. Oh, relationship marketing. It's a proven system. It's a system that we follow always knowing what to do next, always knowing what to do next, right? And as leaders, you can show people exactly what to do next. It's pretty cool. Also, relationship marketing is a lead generation system. It's a lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business, okay? Why am I telling you this? Because you guys are not salespeople for Arvon. You are business owners. Does it make sense? And your job is to generate leads. You are in the lead generation business. And again, what is that? That's initiating interest or inquiry into the products or services of your business. Arbonne is the vehicle that you've chosen, but you have to generate leads for it. Now, what does this mean in relationship with relationship marketing? Next principle, developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. So it's a duty. It's not just a nice thing to do to build relationships. This is your duty. Now, let me kind of bring this together for you, those last two principles in a nutshell. Your job is to meet people and build relationships with them. <laughs> okay, that's your focus. How do you meet people? How do you build relationships? How do you deepen relationships? Systematically. That's the key to the business. Now. Why are the relationships so important? Because we turn relationships into advocates, okay? Underline that. We turn relationships into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service. Every single relationship can become your advocate. They may never be interested in Arbonne, but they can become your advocate. They can be so excited about what you're doing and how you're serving others that they feel compelled to share it with their friends and family. You need to see what my friend Eric is doing. Oh my gosh. The focus on building advocates is how you create a business that grows, that grows without you having to beat the bushes for the next 20 years of your life. I can't even tell you guys how many top leaders in this industry come to me. They're like, I'm already do, you know, I already do these, this income, but I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of the constant prospecting. And I just don't want to do it forever. And then here's what I want you guys to know. Pros prospecting is going to be fun with Teensy, but the, the goal is not to just turn over a sale. The goal is to create advocates. When you create advocates, then the network starts growing like crazy. Make sense? Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute. Next principle, relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship market marketing. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. 
If you're a jerk, this ain't gonna work. You guys hear me okay? Okay. Give me a thumbs up. Okay. I'm getting messages from Zoom that it's changing my microphone back and forth. If you're a jerk, this ain't gonna work. Now here's the good news though. When there's trust, the work is fun. It's fun. You don't have to sell people. You don't have to convince them. You don't have to overcome a mountain of objections. When people trust you, you can get right to helping them. And that's why we're here, right? Also, trust removes the ickiness from the sales process. And I, I, I don't know if ickiness is an official business term, but everyone seems to get it when I say that, right? None of us want to be icky. None of us want our friends to feel icky. When there's trust, that's not an issue. And finally, you get to go for yes. You get to go for yes. And if I had time, I would love to share this whole story, but I have to tell you guys, what really drove me to create Teamsy was... When I was in my when I was in my network marketing business, the first month I hit a decent I hit a high enough rank that they assigned a corporate person to help me with my business. You guys, same Arben does the same thing. And I got on a call with a bunch of people, and they were doing a go for no challenge. Have you guys ever done a go for no challenge? Some of you. <laughs> I was like, "Are you insane? I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. That's that's crazy." The, the idea that if you can get rejected a hundred times, you'll get a good yes. No way. That's not my approach. I just want you guys to know. I'm going to teach you tonight how you go for yes. You don't get rejected in this way. Now, occasionally somebody might be a jerk and reject you, but I am telling you that this relationship marketing approach will minimize rejection. How many of you guys are afraid of rejection? Let's just be honest. That's me. Okay. So you guys are in the right place. Um, three to 5% of people are impervious to rejection and can and can power through anything and hit the tippy top of their company. The rest of us, <laughs> the rest of us can do this system. Okay. All right. So how do you build trust? How do you do it? There's four essential ingredients to building trust. I'm going to give these to you guys quickly. I want you to get this content and then we're going to, we're going to see, and I'll show you how we apply all this. Okay. Number one is chemistry. Number one is chemistry. Number two is character, okay? Number three is competence. And number four is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. Okay, so let me explain these a little bit. Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to, right? Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? The bottom line is people want to do business with a friend, right? There's, they have a lot of choices, don't they? to get your products. There's a lot of people they could choose from. They wanna do business with a friend. They don't wanna do business with someone they don't like. So your first job is to build some rapport, find out what you have in common and start to build that friendship. Does this make sense? Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Okay, character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. This is important. It's so important. I want you to notice something about this about this definition is that you don't actually have character. You don't actually have character. Character is something you do. It's not something we own, it's something we do. Does this make sense? And we think of character as, oh, this is all the, this is the sum of all the good things I've done in my life and what's in my heart. And that doesn't matter to people. They need to see it. They need to see how you care for them. And so your character is the most important thing and you need to demonstrate in everything you do, how you follow up with people you know, how you communicate with people, how you take care of your customers and your teammates, and then beyond your, your business, how you treat people out in the world. Do you drive a car with, with consideration? Do you return the shopping cart at Target into the shopping cart bin? You know, like little things like that are important. Little things like that are important because it's all about your character. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. So just remember, it's, it's when you demonstrate your care for others. This even, this even extends into what you're posting on social media. What's in your stories? What are in your posts? And you can tell when people are really focused on helping the people that follow them or when they're really just kind of focused on themselves, right? Number three is competence. Competence. This is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. This is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. I need to know that you can help me, right? Not just can you sell me your stuff, but why? Why should I buy it? How, does, how is this going to solve my problem? 
Are you knowledgeable? Do you understand your product? Do you know how it helps people? Do you know how it's helped other people in my situation? Do you know how, you know, why is it cost what it costs? Can you explain that to me? So competence is important, especially sometimes, especially with family who might've seen us at some point with our pants on backwards and doing something not that professional, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> So we have to start demonstrating to them that we're, oh, wow, I have a new, I'm in a new realm where I'm growing in incredible competence. Make sense? The second piece is, so that's for me to become your customer, I need to know that you know what you're doing and can help me. Number two, the second piece of this is, why should I join your team? Can you mentor me to be successful in this business? Do I even trust that you know anything about business? How, you know, up till now you haven't. Why do I trust you now? Does this make sense? It's, it's, again, being competent is not enough. It's about demonstrating competence. Guys, I'm just going to jiggle the wires on my microphone, make sure it's plugged in tight, because it is. It keeps telling me that it's switching microphones. Hang with me. Okay. Hopefully that did it. Okay. So competence. Real quick on this, just real quick. You guys have ever heard the term, just fake it till you make it? Some of you guys ever heard that term? This is not the point where you do that. Don't ever, with relationship marketing, you can never be fake, not even a little, okay, right? How many of you guys have a good BS meter? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I, I know there's mostly women on this call too, and being a married man, I get that. That is one of your natural abilities. So don't be fake, don't fake it. Just tell, just be honest. But what you do is you start to share the journey. Oh, I just learned this. I just learned that. You share it out loud on social media with your friends so they can see you journeying, see you learning. You win that very first little thing from, you know, the first little sales prize, the free backpack, the free shaker bottle, whatever it is they gave you. Tell people that you won that, that you hit a milestone in your business. They start to see you growing in confidence. And then the other thing that I want the new people to do, new people, this is important is you talk about your team members and your upline and how competent and amazing they are. You tell their story. You let people know you are part of that team, that when they join you, they're joining them. Make sense? So the competence of your team is something you need to constantly be communicating. Um, and you know, I know that your upline lends their competence. They help you. They get on calls with people and things like that. But tell their stories. If you're new and you don't feel like you have a story yet, tell the stories of the people on your team. Make sense? Chemistry, character, competence, the first three ingredients for building trust. There's an underlying principle real quick. Again, this principle, I'm just going to drop on you and go, move on. I wish I could spend a whole hour just on this principle, but this is it. When somebody's going to do business with you, they only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Now, real quick on this, you guys. You guys can dig into this and think on this a little bit on your own. If somebody says yes, yes, yes to all three of these, you've got an advocate. Mission accomplished. Here's somebody who's excited about what you're doing and they're gonna tell other people about it. If you've got a, I'm not sure, I don't know the answer to any of these, you have somebody who will raise objections. You guys ever get objections? Yeah, it doesn't mean you're not trustworthy. It just means that your relationship hasn't deepened enough yet. You need to keep working on that relationship, right? Overcome the objections, help people. By the way, objections are a great thing. They're good to get because an objection is somebody telling you, I want to do this. You just need to help me over this one obstacle, right? So, but objections show that they don't know. And if they do know the answer is no to any one of these, this is important. If they know it's no to any one of these, they will never do business with you. And they are likely to tell other people not to do business with you. Now think about this. Look at those three things, guys. And think about how you've reacted when you've come up against that. This is what matters. Now what's interesting about this is what kind of protein is in your shake? Do you see that as one of the three questions? What kind of sweeteners do you guys use? Those are not the issues that matter. Now it's good that you guys have great products, right? My point is these are the things that matter. It's all about trust and relationship. Okay, let's jump into number four. Let's see teensy. Number four, consistency. Yes, you got to do some work. You have to do some work to do this and we've got to do it consistently, right? Consistency is the key to success. 
It's also the key to building trust. Nobody's going to be believe you if you say, just trust me. They want to see you do it consistently. I love this principle about it too, which is that people respect consistency and desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. This means that not only does consistency help people trust you, it draws them to you. Have you guys ever been told by somebody that you inspire them? That you're inspiring, that they love your posts, you're so uplifting, and you think, me? But let's think about what that means. What typically inspires people is your ability to be consistent. People join a team like this, and they love the team even more than the, than the company right? It's because they're in an environment where there's people striving to be consistent. It is an incredibly attractive thing. I want you guys to know that being consistent helps you be successful, but it also draws people to you and builds your business. Does that make sense? Now, how many of you by show of hands are consistent products of your product? And not just that you buy and use the products, but that people actually know that you buy and use the products, right? That's the next piece. How many of you guys consistently share your story? You're on social media posting regularly. You're sharing. Okay, good. That's important, right? Because being secretive doesn't work for this business, <laughs> right? We don't get much done. It's like a company without any marketing doesn't do that well. Okay. How, um, but here's the thing I really want to talk to you guys about when it comes to consistency. This is what really matters. Zig Ziglar used to call it the checkup from the neck up. Are you as consistent with your relationships? I, I know that's why you're here. Duh, Eric, that's why we're here listening to you talk tonight. Are you as consistent with staying in touch with people? Because this is what, this is what you know, it's easy to. Eric, I think we lost you. Is my microphone going go crazy? I think it went, I think, unless it was How's just that? for me, but I, yeah, that's better. You're back. Is it better? Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I, I the Zoom keeps saying your, your microphone has switched to internal, you know, the internal right. microphone is no good. When that one hit, one hit. Like I'm in a bathroom. Yeah. Okay. You guys okay. hear me now? Yeah, I think that's better. You're good to go. I don't know what it, cause it's every, every. I'm getting those messages. I don't know what's happening. How's that? That's fine. Okay. And the little lights are flack flickering. So, all right. So let's talk about being consistent with relationships. Relationship building is a contact sport, which means if you want a relationship with somebody, you have to be in regular contact. You have to be in regular contact. And I know your time's scarce, which is why we built Teams. We're going to show you how easy that is to use. But I want you to get this one principle before we move on. And that's this. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Now, really quick, uh, if you guys have, I know a lot of you have your cameras on, which is awesome. Turn your camera on for a second if you're, if you're decent, if you can, so I can see your faces. How many of you have ever received um, like a great card or letter from somebody that you love that had a handwritten message in it. And when you read that message, it was just like, oh man, got you right in the heart, right? Everybody, I hope, right? Okay, if you haven't ever received a card or letter like that, put your address in the chat so we can send you one because it's important. Okay, now you guys probably thought of a specific card or letter when I asked you that question. The next question I have for you is how many of you have kept that card or letter like you, you haven't been able to throw it away? just about everybody. How, who has a stash of cards and letters that you've saved over the years? We all do. Isn't this amazing? Now, I have, I have taught this little mini course in every, every country practically that can understand English, and it's universal. Everybody has a stash of these cards and letters. It, you know what else is amazing is when somebody passes on, often the family will keep their cards and letters. That's the most treasured thing they leave behind. It's incredible. Now, just to kind of counterbalance that example. Have you ever received one of these? This is a happy birthday postcard. This one's from my life insurance salesperson. Anyone here sell life insurance? This is from my life insurance salesperson. You guys ever get something like this, like from your dentist or yeah, a few of you. Now, did you save this in the special place? <laughs> no, this got recycled or thrown away, right? 
How many of you guys enter the house through the garage? You don't even go through the front door. You just drive the car into the house. Does anybody do that? That's what I do too. And next to where I open the door of my car is a recycling bin where most of the mail goes. It doesn't even make it in the house. Now I saved this one so that I could make fun of it on my calls. But let's talk about this for a second. Why is this not valuable? Why is this not going to be the bookmark in the family Bible when I'm gone? Well, let's look at what it is. This is, remember the, remember the principle? This required no investment of time. This is an automatic service, right? Required no investment of time. So we put no value on it. Now, the second piece of the principle is it needs to be personal. This is impersonal. See the difference? It's impersonal. It required no investment of time. We don't give it much attention. It has no value. The, the key to deepening a relationship is investing time personally. This is why, for example, sending somebody a direct message through Messenger is 10 times better than commenting on their post because it's personal and it took a minute, a second. Make sense? Now, I'm not telling you guys you need to go out writing people love letters and cards all the time, though if you can ever think of a reason to do that in your business, you should do it because they'll save it probably forever, right? Isn't that amazing to think about? I have, I have blank cards that have the Teensy logo on one side and the other side's blank for, for those moments. I mean, that's marketing collateral, right? From your heart. Okay. How many of you guys build a business from your heart like me? Yeah. So it's both and. It's a both and situation. But, I am, but, but just getting down to what you're going to do in Teensy for the most part, messaging, texting, quick little messages. They take three seconds, but it's still an investment of time that is rare. Does this make sense? In a person. And this is how Teensy is so incredibly effective. Isn't, are you guys tracking with me? Okay, let me, uh, let me just give you the, the last slide and we'll jump into Teensy. I'll show you how this works. So again, that principle, in case you didn't write it down, investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. But you gotta have a system to do all this that I'm teaching you tonight. It's, it's all, I can see by your faces, you like it. Like this is good content. Yeah, this is great. But how do you apply this systematically? How do you master this and then teach your downline to do it? You have to have a way to stay in contact with all your relationships regularly. You wanna know when to contact them. In other words, I, how many of you guys have done this? Okay, I'm gonna do a power hour. Who should I, connect, who should I message, <laughs> right? You wanna know who you're gonna contact and when. Also know what you're gonna say. So you don't spend an hour looking at the screen, looking at all their stories and their posts, trying to think of what to say. That was me for a long time. And then make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. So you gotta have a system to do all this. That's what Teamsy is. Let's, let's pop out of this presentation and take a look at Teamsy. So first off, if you guys um, are not using Teamsy, go to teamsy.com and start a free trial, okay? You can get in there, you get full access for free to try it out. So start a free trial. It'll ask you what business you are in and there'll be a drop down of all the, all the um, custom versions we've made and you'll pick the Arbon version, okay? All right, and once you've logged into your free trial, it looks like this. This is the first screen of the setup wizard. Now we created this setup wizard because, how many of you guys have ever used a CRM at work? A CRM system? <laughs> yeah, did you like it? Everybody hates using CRM. Now Teams is a CRM. That's a contact relationship management system. And everybody hates using CRM, including me in my career. I hated using it. So we made Teamsy to be the opposite experience, right? It's supposed to be easy and fun. So this setup wizard makes it really easy to set up. Let's, let's walk through it. Okay. There's a little video from me, which is great. Okay, we'll skip over to the next thing. This is really, really kind of the heart and soul of setting this up. What is your income goal? How much would you like to be earning 12 months from now? Okay, what's your income goal? And there's a little slider here. You can slide it up and down depending on what your goal is and it will change what you have to do on a daily basis to hit it. Teamsy is gonna tell you exactly what to do, exactly what to do, right? This is the benefit of having founders who spent 20 years coaching businesses. Now, my goal was 150,000 a year. So I'm gonna set it right there because that was the salary I was trying to replace. Now, take a look at this. To get to 150,000, I need to be connecting with nine prospects, six of my customers and four consultants each day, okay? Five days a week. 
that's just telling me exactly what to do, which is really cool. All right, let's continue. So now when I click continue, it set Teams -E up to my goal. So each one of you will have a customized dashboard based on your individual goal, which is really cool. The next step is getting your contacts imported. And there's some little quick, these are little tutorial videos, but we have a full page of tutorials on our help center for everything. So, um, but the best way to get started is probably just to get your team imported from back office, get your customers in. And then if you're active on Facebook, you can import your Facebook friends. And then you've got enough people that you can get off to the races, right? Okay. Um, but you can also import anything, Instagram, LinkedIn, you can import from just about anywhere now into Teamsy. So once you've got all your contacts into Teamsy, we're going to launch Teamsy. Now, something really cool about this, I just want to say, Teamsy is cloud-based, which means it's always there. It's on your computer. It's on your iPad. It's in your phone. Like wherever you are, you can always get to it, okay? Which means... You're not digging through your phone looking for a contact. You're not looking for pads of paper where you scribbled stuff down. Do we have any sticky note people? Any sticky note people? A couple of sticky note people, right? So you don't have to look for the sticky notes. It's going to be in your phone. When you meet somebody and you're having a conversation and you're like, yeah, let's stay in touch. You're like, great. You can pull out your phone and add them to Teamsy. You don't have to write it on a napkin. Make sense? You put them right in there. It's really cool. They'll be in one place organized. You really can't build a big business if you're feeling disorganized. The other thing that Teamsy does with those contacts, which I'll show you in a second, is it has a magic algorithm that keeps them always in front of you so that you never have to think about who to connect with and nobody falls through the cracks ever. Okay, so we're on our Teamsy dashboard. Okay, let me just show you a couple things, kind of a quick, quick, quick tour, and then I'm going to show you how to do a power hour. Okay. All right, so when you're looking at this dashboard, and again, you can use this on your phone, so it'll be a, it'll be a different experience on your phone, right? Um, but I want you to see where it says today's activities. See today's activities right here? These are the goals that we just set. So you can see my goal is to connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four consultants. What do I mean by connect? Do I mean sending some cheesy sales script where they're gonna not respond and then start avoiding me, <laughs> unfriend me on social media? No. It's just to connect, and I want you guys to write this down, to make their day, just to make their day, okay? We call it the make someone's day mindset. We want you to connect to make their day, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do in a second. But if you can focus, remember that whole idea of connecting personally, investing a little time in people? If you can focus on doing that just to make someone's day, guess what? Your response rate will be through the roof, okay? And that now gives you a chance to have conversations with people, which is the name of the game. It's creating conversations. So nine prospects, six customers, four consultants. Those were my goals. Now your numbers will vary. I've also got a goal to share three times. Now, what do I mean by share? I'm going to make it as simple as possible for you guys. A share is when I share a product solution with somebody or if I share my, the business opportunity with somebody. That's a share. Okay. Everything else lead, is leading to the share. But it's important that you guys understand that because you got to track that. That's an important part of the business. You can create a million conversations a day, but if you never share, you're not going to get to that next step. Make sense? And then I've got a goal to add. That's adding new people to Teamsy. Meeting new people, maybe people I hadn't thought of, constantly adding people to my Teamsy list. You want to keep it fresh. Your business is like a beautiful lake. Like picture a lake up in the mountains. It's just gorgeous, right? If there's no fresh water coming into that lake, everything will die. Your business is the same. You gotta always have fresh water. Okay, so, so that, those are my goals for the day. I need to hit those five days a week and I'm gonna hit my goal in a year. Pretty cool. Now let's scroll down a little bit here to this power hour section. Now Teamsy, as I said, is a full CRM, which means that all your contacts are in here. You know the names of their spouse, the name of their dog, their favorite Starbucks drink, whatever. You've kept track of everything, right? You tracked everything in Teamsy. But what it does that's really special is this power hour, meaning you don't have to go to that filing cabinet and look stuff up. Teamsy tells you what to do every day. So my power hour is going to keep me super focused on what I need to do. And there's four lists here. Check this out. Prospects, customers, consultants, and my follow-ups. Okay. This is telling me who to connect with. Now, the right-hand side is where I log the message that I send so that it's tracked as I go. Okay. Well, so it's tracked as I go. So let me just kind of explain to you how this works. You see how people have name, have these numbers next to their names. We use a simple system in Team Z, a five-star system. You guys familiar with five-star ratings? Yeah. 
So the five stars set the frequency in Teamsy. So when you put your t- when you put your list in, you're going to do a quick rank on them. You're going to say, oh, this person's five, this person's four, this person's three, whatever. It's not you're not rating the person, by the way. You're rating the quality of your relationship with that person. Okay. So five-star people are your best friends, your closest family, the people who trust you the most. They're going to show up first and they're going to come back on your list every 30 days. If you don't know them that well and you're messaging them every 30 days, they're going to think you're weird. Make sense? Five-star people though are your best people because they trust you the most. They're the most likely people to become your advocates. Four-star people would come up next on your list and they come back automatically every 60 days. I don't have to set a follow-up for them. They come back on my list every 60 days. We stay in touch this way. Three-star people, which will be 90%, 80 to 90% of your list will be three-star people. They're going to come up every 90 days, okay? They're going to come up every 90 days. Two-star people every 120 days. Does this make sense? So what Teensy does is it automatically creates your power hour list for you. You don't have to track or think. If you connect, when I connect with Jay, which we're going to do in a second, it's going to automatically remember to bring her back in 30 days. I don't have to think about her. Isn't that cool? Okay. So that's kind of the magic of it. This is how people don't fall through the cracks. So let me show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to actually do the power hour right now. Now, however you want to connect with somebody, you can do that. You can direct message them on every any app you have. You can text them, whatever. You can get on a FaceTime with them. You can log any kind of communication. I'm going to use Facebook Messenger, though, just to demonstrate today because that's my primary messaging app. Um, so we're going to do a power hour. First person on my list, always start left and right. From left to right, start with your prospects first. The first person on my list is Jay. We're going to send her a message. Now, let me show you how easy this is. I've got Facebook open right here in a separate tab, so I can just jump over there and send her a message. Now, here's the question I used to hit. What am I going to say? You guys ever get stuck here? What are you going to say? How are you going to start this conversation? And after we had Teamsy out for about a year, people were constantly saying, man, when you, Eric, when you do your Zoom trainings, it's awesome because you make it seem so easy. But then when I get into Teamsy, I have no idea what to say. So we added all of my scripts to Teamsy. So they're all in there for you guys to use, right? And I say the number one feedback I get when I do calls like this is people are excited about the scripts. So let me show you how to do this. Right here, you can see scripts right there. Do you guys see that the little light bulb? So you just click that and it will give you choice of different types of scripts. I even have scripts for writing handwritten cards. (laughs) I told you to do that earlier, right? Okay, so let's go to Facebook. And I've got all kinds of scripts here. So we're going to pull the first one off the list. It's called Connect Number One. And here's how it reads in case you can't see it. It says, hi, Jane, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. Simple. It's so simple. This is just an icebreaker script. You guys, this little script, I must have sent this script 3,000 times in my life. It works amazing. People love this script. They always respond. So what you do is just click on copy script that brings it to my clipboard, right? So now I can, you can actually go straight to Messenger and paste it, but I like to paste it in Teamsy so that I can edit it before I send it because I have sent it with the wrong name a few times. (laughs) And maybe, you know, customize it a little bit. See if my computer will cooperate with me and bring up my emojis. And there they go. All right, so maybe a couple of emojis. I don't know. I have a Mac and it's 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 ready to be purged of a lot of videos and images, I think, because it's really slow. Okay, hold on. It's not giving me my emojis. Just give me something. Just give me something. Just give me something. Come here. Okay, it's, it's not working. That's my Mac. I've been struggling with it all day. You guys get the idea. So you can add emojis, customize it however you want. Okay. So once I have it the way I want it, I'm just going to copy this and go message it to her. There she is. You can even save her link and put it in her Teamsy um, profile so you can just click it if you want. So look, I'm going to paste that message in there. I'm going to send it. There it is. It's sent to her. Toggle back over to Teamsy and finish logging it. What was it? It was a Facebook message big blue button, log connect, click that, and it's logged. So now look what happened. She's gone off my list. I sent her a message, logged it, she's gone. Now, if Jay responds, great, we'll have a conversation. If she doesn't respond, no big deal. She's going to come back on this list in 30 days. Are you guys with me? And I'll message her again. 
Now look it up, I'm gonna scroll up so you can see this. I've got one done and this little circle starting to fill in. This is my visual cue that I'm doing some work. So I'm gonna to go to Ermin who's next. I can just use that same script again and just change the name. Are you guys with me? And then send, go send this message to him, log it. And now look, I've got two done, seven left. So I'm gonna work my way down my list, just sending the messages. Honestly, you guys, if you're new to Teamsy, you can use the same script over and over and over. Just change the name. Now, this is just a little tip for you. When you're starting a new chat with someone, always use their first name in the first message. Okay? Don't think, oh, it's going to save me so much time if I just put, hey, girl, um, and then I'll never have to change the name, right? Because what you've done is you've taken a personal message and turned it to an impersonal message. Does that make sense? So always keep it personalized. Always put their name at the beginning of the chat, okay? So that it's personal. So we're gonna work our way down the prospects list until you hit your goal for the day. And when I do, that circle will be all the way blue. In my case, it's nine messages. So boom, boom, boom. How, how quick do you think you could send those nine messages using the script? Really quick, right? So we're sending those messages out. And when that's all the way filled in, we're gonna go to our next list, which is our customers, okay? And we're going to treat this the exact same way. We just want to make their day. We don't necessarily need to do a salesy message with our customers. We just want to stay in touch with them. We just want to stay in touch with them. So Gail comes up. I'll do the same thing. I'll go to scripts. Now, Teamsy knows we're on customers. So you're going to get a different list of scripts now. Okay. So you have some cool stuff like this. Like, hey, Jane, you're doing so great. I'm proud of you. Congratulations on. Do you guys have good reasons to congratulate people on good results? Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> you guys are looking at me like, I guess. I hope so. Yeah, so you congratulate them on the results. I love this one too. This one's great. Um, hi, John, how are you enjoying the products? So you take out the products and you, the word, the products, and you put in what they purchased. Okay, send me an update and let me know how I can be of help. Please send me an update and let me know how I can be of help. This is a great way to reconnect with customers who you haven't talked to in a while because they will tell you if they're liking the products or not. Both answers is great information for you, right? If they say, oh, well, you know, I stopped using and I have six bags on the shelf. This is, a, I'm glad we, well, I'm glad I reached out to you. We need to get you on a program. Maybe we can get you in an accountability group or something, right? Make, make sense so that you can work with those folks. And this is my favorite one. I'll share this last script with you. My favorite one for customers. Hi, Jane, just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day. Have any of you guys who are using Teams, have you sent this one? Have you tried this one? Send it tomorrow to some of your favorite people and watch the results you get. People respond so amazingly, especially, oh my gosh, especially with the year we've just gone through. <laughs> people are loving getting connected with people. So the whole point here, guys, again, so easy. You take a script that you like, you copy it, put it in there, you change the name. You can add some emojis if you want, okay? Um, go send it to them and then log it in Teams Eat and you're going to work your way down your customer list until that circle turns pink. But just really quick on this, it's so important. It's so important. I'm going to stop sharing. There you go. It's so important to stay in touch with your customers, you guys. It's so important to stay in touch with your customers. Customers are a goldmine for you. I, I, I remember one time I met a, I was talking to a top leader um, and she said to me, um, I have 9,000. She'd been in the business 10 years. I have 9,000 customers. I don't talk to any of them at all. And I said, well, what are you doing to build your business? She's like, well, I mean, I'm just constantly on Instagram, trying to meet people on Instagram, constantly recruiting. And I was like, you never need to recruit. You never need to go to Instagram ever again for the rest of your life with 9,000 customers. That is a gold mine. Now, 9,000 is a lot to manage. So I had her get a hire a, an assistant to reach out to her 9,000 customers on a regular basis. Some of you guys are like, oh, I want to do that. But here's the thing I want you guys to understand. This is a statistical fact. If you're in regular contact with customers, they order more product and they retain longer. Okay, they order more product and they retain longer. This is not just Arbon; it's every, every business. Now, what happens is, when I do a team call like this, how many of you guys are feeling a little bit fired up right now? Good. I'll do a team call like this. Everyone will be using Teamsy for the next month, right? And then, wow, team volume went up 20, 30%. How did that happen? 
because you're in touch with your customers. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're, to hear from you because I, I think I need to get more. I need to do this. I need, right? Does this make sense? Are you guys with me? Being in touch, look, how many of you guys have ever waited tables? And anybody ever waited tables or 10 bar? Right? You guys know that if you're present and around your tables, they order more, right? Which is the name of the game. Absolutely. I always talk about the, you know, great service. If you're having incredible service um, and you're really loving your meal and everything's going great and then your server doesn't come back after the food is dropped off, it just changes the whole experience, doesn't it? And that's what we do in our business all the time, isn't it? So we got to stay in touch and you don't have to be salesy. Just be present, just be in touch and you'll be amazed at what happens, okay? Now, the third reason why you need to be in touch with your customers, and again, I don't have a lot of time to go into this, but remember how we talked about advocates? The best way to grow your business, the most fun way to grow your business is for people who already know you and love you to introduce you to people, right? And not have to convince people or build trust with people who don't know you all the time. And that's gonna be from your best customers. Your best customers will introduce you to their friends and family, but they're not gonna do that if, they're not, if you're not present, if you're not consistently connecting with them. Make sense? Okay, so back to Teamsy. You're gonna connect your power hour. You're gonna connect with your prospects and your customers. Now we're about 10 minutes into our power hour, honestly. We've just sent, what did we send? Six plus nine, 14 messages. Okay, so we'll say we're 15 minutes in. Now we're gonna to talk to our team, our consultants, okay? So we're gonna stay in touch with our team the same way. By the way, this is why we call it Teamsy. That's why it's named Teamsy. How many of you guys have a decent sized team already? How many of you guys are just starting out? Okay, great. So when you're just starting out, it's easy to stay in touch with your team, right? So you can build a good habit now. When your team gets big, it becomes more important to be organized. Now, here's why this is so important. It's as, it is as important as prospecting, you guys. Why? Well, here's the dirty little secret about our business. Some of you guys know this secret. Is the turnover rate is ridiculous. Have you guys experienced this? Okay, so on average, it's 50% a year, which means you recruit two consultants. At the end of the year, one's quit already. That's a bummer. Now, how do you impact retention? How do you help people stick to it longer so they can be successful? Isn't that why we want them to join our team so we can help them be successful, right? We only win when our team wins, but how we keep people going is by building a relationship. I want you guys to know, look, I am uh, a student of social science. Like every study about worker productivity and motivation, I read it, I read all those books, right? Um, I'm, I'm also somebody who has a strong spiritual faith. Now, here's what's really interesting. The social study, the social studies, the social science and biblical principle agree. Isn't that cool? So I should get everybody, everybody here on the call should agree then with this. Is that relation, people work for relationship. They work because of the relationship. That is what motivates people is the feeling of connection and relationship. So as the leader of the team, it's up to you to stay connected with people. Okay, check in with them. That's why we put them in Teamsy so that it's easy to do, to stay connected. Now think about it for a second. Guys, think about somebody upline from you who you really look up to. Do you, can you guys think of somebody like that? Like, you know, they're kind of like a celebrity. You guys, yeah, a couple of you guys, yeah. Now imagine right now while we're talking, your phone buzzed and you got a text from that person that said, hey, just want to let you know I'm really proud of you. I saw what you did this month. You're doing great. Would that be meaningful? Now that's going to be you. That's going to be a text from you that's meaningful like that. Make sense? So don't neglect your team. Again, if you've only got a few, it's all good. But as you get going, you know, a good friend of mine, he's got uh, 56,000 people on his team. So we have, we have, he can't stay in touch with everybody, but we have figured out who's going to go in Teamsy so that he can build those relationships and maintain them. Make sense? So it's super important. Okay, so the first half of your power hour is... Prospects, customers, consultants, just sending messages to make people stay. Now, look, if everyone in your team is on this call and they know that you're messaging them because they're in Teamsy, that's okay. You can just say, guess what? Sadie, you're on top of my Teamsy list today. How the heck are you? Okay. And, and everybody loves it. It's all good. I get three messages a day that say, you're the top of my Teamsy list today, Eric. Ha, ha, ha. I love it. Well, of course I love it too because it's my company, but I get those messages all the time. I love it. I, I, you know what? 
I feel honored that people put me in their teams and they want to remember to message me. I think that's cool. And that's how your team will feel too. So prospects, customers, consultants, the first 30 minutes or so of your, of your power hour is just sending off those outgoing messages. Now, pro tip to this is when they start responding to you, because some will immediately respond, just try not, try not to respond until we're done getting all the outgoing messages done. Okay. Cause you'll get, you'll get on one conversation and not get the rest sent. Makes sense. So just focus on sending. The other, the other pro tip on this is do not, do not give any mind share to people who don't respond. You don't need to set a follow-up with them because they're coming back on Teamsy automatically. You don't need to think about them because if half of the people you message respond, you'll be busy, right? They'll come back again in Teamsy later. You can message them again then, okay? And then you just take the next script, which follows on for somebody who didn't respond 30 days ago, okay? All right. The second half of your power hour is your follow-ups list. Okay, so the first half of your power hour is outgoing messages, prospects, customers, consultants, striking up new conversations. The second half is your follow-ups list. Now look at, when I get there, there's nothing scheduled. It's not automatic. The follow-ups are not automatic. Let me explain how this works. Now you can set a follow-up with somebody for any reason. I don't care. It could be for anything. You could be following up to see how the new puppy is when they, bring, they say they're bringing the puppy home on Friday. You can follow up for anything. But what we built this to be is your pipeline of hot leads. What do I mean by this? These are people you've shared with. You've had a conversation. You've shared a product solution with them. You've sent them links. You've talked to them about the business opportunity, right? They were interested in signing up. Those are the people we want to put on our follow-ups list primarily. Okay? Now, just staying in touch with somebody, I don't need to set a follow-up with them because they're automatically going to cycle through my Teamsy list. But when I've shared, now they need to be on my follow-ups list because we've moved the conversation from, hey, how are you? How's life? To, oh, now I'm being a professional with you. You've asked for my professional help. Now I'm going to be a pro with you. Does this make sense? So let me just show you how to do it. And then I'm going to talk to you real quick about this, how to do it. And then we'll do some Q&A. So we message Jay at the beginning of our power hour. She responds, let's say, Eric, nice to hear from you. Hope you guys are doing great. Perfect. Now she's responded. I have a chance to start a conversation with her. And by the way, I'm going to just give you guys a little secret weapon for starting conversations. How many of you guys struggle with that when they respond and they go, we're great. Thanks, Eric. You're like, great. Now, how do I keep the conversation going? I'm going to give you my secret weapon. This only took me like 20 years to figure out. And then once I did, I was like, this is amazing. This is what I say. Well, send me an update. What have you been up to? <laughs> send me an update is the most powerful phrase ever. How was your holidays? Send me an update. How was your weekend? Send me an update. What have you guys been doing? Send me an update. How have you been since high school? Send me an update. And people respond. They, they just fill it in. So there's my little, there's a little trick for you guys to try. It's not a trick. It's a great way to engage someone in a conversation. Once they start telling you about what's going on in their life, now you have something to be interested in. Remember, this conversation's about them. It's about building a relationship. It's about listening, finding out what's going on with them. And, you know, just really being interested and in seeing if there's anything you can help with. Right? Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with Arbon. Maybe it's that they have a leaky roof and you know a good roofer. Right? <laughs> Maybe they're just having a really difficult day and they need some encouragement. They need you to pray with them. They need some, a joke, okay? Just being present. By the way, you guys, I'm just telling you, when you build your business this way, it's so rewarding, not just financially, but emotionally, okay? You're gonna love this. So I'm talking to Jay, we're having a conversation. She sends me her update. I'm interested, I'm asking questions. I'm trying to learn a little bit more about what's going on, being really interested in her. Now picture, picture this, we're doing it through Messenger, but picture, that we're at the store or something, we run into each other face to face. Remember that? Remember when we used to do that? <laughs> Would it be really strange if she told me everything she's been doing for the last six months and I said, well, great to talk to you and walked away? It would be really strange. I need to tell her what I'm do doing, right? It's called the law of reciprocation. I'm gonna say, oh, well, let me tell you what we've been up to. So now I'm gonna tell her what's going on with us, with my family, with my wife, with my kids, with my business. Does it make sense? People are always like, Eric, I just don't know when to bring up the business. How do I do it? I don't want to be a cheesy salesperson. How do I bring up the business? How do I do it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> How do you bring it up? It's part of the conversation. They told you about work. You tell them about Arbon. I don't know if I told you. Yeah, you know, the kids are doing great. We got a new puppy. It's been awesome, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
Did I tell you I started my own home-based business? Oh, you did? Yeah, it's been amazing. Have you heard of Arvon? Yeah, I've heard of them. It's, it's such a cool company. And so you tell them what you're doing. It's just totally natural. Does this make sense, you guys? You don't be afraid to share that. It's totally natural. What you're not doing is saying, would you like samples? Would you like to buy? Can I send you a link? Have you ever thought of starting your own business? It's like, whoa, hold on a second. What happened to, what have you been up to since high school? How did we jump that gap? You don't need to do that. Tell them what you're doing and why you're passionate about it. Okay, write that down. What are you doing and why you're passionate about it? Now, here's something else that I'm, I feel strongly about. And I know that, I know there are people that disagree with me on this, but I don't think, I think you should tell them right away that you're with Arvon. There's no reason to hide that or, or conceal that information because you're proud of it, right? You're proud of it. Get it out of the way so that they're not like, what is, what is she planning? Get it right out of the way. Let them know. I do Arbon. I love it. This is why I'm passionate about it. What happens when you tell somebody that you love something and you're passionate about it? They're happy for you. They're happy for you. So now you've introduced to your friend that you have this business and they're happy for you. You haven't created any negative energy now towards what you're doing between you. Make sense? And so how do I now share or how do I now see if she's interested? Here's the easiest way to do it, you guys. So they're like, oh, good for you, Eric. Oh, that's so great. I'm so glad you found something that you like. Now, at this point, she may be a little bit like, here it comes, right? So I would just say, yeah, it's been amazing. And, you know, if you ever like to learn more about it, just let me know. If you'd ever like to learn more about it, just let me know. I'd be happy to send you more information. You'd be surprised how many people say, okay, yeah, I think I'd like a little more information. Make sense? If she says, okay, I'll keep that in mind. Perfect. I appreciate that. And if you could do me even more of a favor, Jay, if you ever come across anybody who needs help with their nutrition, weight loss, or these, any of these amazing products that we represent, please connect them with me. I'd be happy to take care of, great care of them for you. Okay, Eric, I'll do that. Right? I'm training her. I'm training her to be my advocate. Great talking to you. Great talking to you, Jay. Hopefully we'll connect again soon. Have a great one. You too. Bye. Well, that was nice. Now we've now I've planted the seed, right? Does this make sense? Are you guys with me? A couple of you guys are looking at me like, that sounds so easy to do. I think you might've been overthinking this process, right? Okay, so we're starting conversations so that we can have great conversations and we can be interested in people. We can learn more about them and we can let them know what we do and why we're passionate about it. That's step one, make sense? Now, when Jay says, okay, yeah, I'd like a little more information. Here's what I would not do, just so you guys know. I know I'm over delivering, I'm over training. I can't help it, I'm a coach, I can't help it. But I wouldn't just fire off some videos or links. I would never do that because I feel like that's a waste, right? right? The response rate is pretty low on those. Let's be honest. What I would do is say, okay, great. If you'd like some more info, perfect. Um, do you have five minutes right now to jump on a, jump on a FaceTime or Zoom? And if she's like, just so we can talk, get off the chat, we can talk face to face for five minutes. Uh, a lot of times I'll say yes. And if she's not say, okay, well, perfect. Well, no, 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 no problem. I have a couple spots open tomorrow. Will any of these work? You get them on a face-to-face -face with them on a Zoom or a FaceTime with them. It's perfect. Then you can ask them some questions and you can find out what they really want. You can have nice conversations. Does this make sense? Um, and again, you keep the same tone. This is what I'm doing. This is cool. What do you, you know, do you have specific goals? What are your goals? Man, tell me what they are. This is my whole thing is I want to know what your goals are. See if I can help. You want to lose weight? I'm really good at that. We've got great products for that. What, why? Why do you want to lose weight? So have a great conversation. Find out what their goals are. So, so I'm telling you all this so that you can see what I'm going to do in Teamsy. So I'm, I, I get her on a, on a FaceTime or something. We talk for five, 10 minutes about what her goals are. And I might recommend a product solution for her. Does this make sense? Okay. I also want to let you guys know, I'm pretty confident in what I'm, how many of you guys are pretty confident in your products and what you're, what you're doing? Great. If you get them face to face on a Zoom or a FaceTime or something, and you're confident, you're, you're going to almost always have somebody say, yes, send me the links. I want to buy it. Does this make sense? It's going to be so much, you know, you might not get people on that call as often as them saying, yeah, send me a video, but I'm going to tell you that the conversion rate is going to be much better. Does this make sense? And you're going to feel good because you're really helping. Okay. So let's go back to Teamsy and show you what we're going to do. So I'm talking to Jay. We're having a great conversation. 
we've had now a talk and she wants to order some products. I've, I've recommended a few to her. So let me, sh let me show you how I'm going to do that. She's not on my dashboard anymore. She's back in the Teamsy cycle, but I can get to her by looking her up at the top. So just put a little bit of her name in. She'll pop in. There she is. This takes me to her full contact record. Okay, so I'll have like all of our all of our chats logged in here. Um, I would put in here, you know, the name of her. Actually, I should put it in here. Um, the name of her dog. Her name's Shelby. Okay, right. Her spouse is named Will. I happen in Jay works for me, so I know all of our information. Right. So you start. You'll start collecting all that information. But what I'm going to do now is I want to log this call. So I click on the connect box. It looks just like it did on the dashboard, right? And this was a video chat. I'm going to put our notes from our FaceTime. Great. And then see on the bottom left right here where I'm circling where it says share. When I do a share, I'm going to click that because I want to log it in Teamsy that I shared a product solution with her. Look, there it is, products. So now this is going to log as a share. And you'll notice that it created a follow-up in two days. Now I'm going to change that. That's just a default. I'm going to change that to tomorrow. Okay. And then when I log this, you can see now it's added a follow-up to, to her record. Let me go to the dashboard and show you what it looks like there. One share has been logged. See that? One of my three has been logged. And if I look at my follow-ups list now that had nothing on it, now it has J for tomorrow. See that, guys? So here's how this works. Here's a little pro tip. When I'm talking to Jay, I'm going to tell her when I'm going to follow up. Hey, I'll follow up with you tomorrow. See if you have any questions. Sound good? She says, great. Always tell them when you're going to follow up and then do it. Guess what that does? It builds trust. It builds trust. It's a deposit in the trust account. He told me what he was going to do and he did it. It's a promise kept. Now look at this. I'm going to follow up. So tomorrow when I do my power hour, I do my prospects, my customers, my consultants, just sending them fun messages like I showed you. And then I come to see what follow-ups are due. Jay will be due, so I'll send her a follow-up message. It's exactly like sending an, a regular message in Teamsy, except we're doing it for a reason. So you go to scripts, and this time you're going to pick a script called that's a follow-up. So look, here's follow-up number one. Here's the script. Hi, Jane, just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Super simple. Now I put, I just, just so you guys know, those of you guys who are a little bit worried about following up and being annoying, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. I have 10 follow-up messages in here for you that I've, that are like tried and tested, friendly, not annoying messages. They're numbered in order. So I'm going to send her follow-up number one today. Okay. So again, we put it in there. We put the right name in. Okay. Get it just the way you want it. Go send it to her. Here she is. We'll send her the follow-up message. Boom, message sent. Toggle back to Teamsy. And when I log it in Teamsy, watch what happens. Now it's saying, did this complete your scheduled follow-up? So, so yes, we're gonna leave that checked. Do you wanna add another follow-up? Yeah, of course I do. I wanna keep her on my follow-ups list. So let's set, now let's follow up, let's say on Saturday. Okay, great. And I can leave myself a note. I'm gonna send her follow-up number two. That F U stands for follow up, just so you guys know. Okay. <laughs> That's a different kind of messaging. We don't do that in Teamsy. Okay, so here we go. So now it's ready to go. I'm going to complete that. And now you can see I've got a new follow up set for her on Saturday. Pretty easy, right? Do you guys see how this works? So when we're moving, where we're connecting on prospects, customers, and consultants, it's just relationship building. We're trying to have conversations with people. When we get to a great conversation where we share, we put them on that follow ups list. And now we're going to treat them professionally. Now, real quick on this. How am I doing? I'm way over time. Are you guys, are you guys want me to keep going? Okay, let me just finish on how to do this without being annoying. Then we'll do Q&A. Okay. Uh, my mom used to say, if you scratch a minister, you get a sermon. I don't really know what I am, but that's kind of what's happening here, right? Okay. So um, following up. Here's the thing. This is where people mess this up. This is where people fall through the cracks. 80% of sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up. Okay. 80% of sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up. I know some of those smiles disappeared, but it's true. It's true. We need to follow up a lot typically 
So I've talked to Jay, she's super excited. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to do this. And yeah, send me those links, I'm gonna sign up. And I'm like, okay, great, I'm gonna send, I'll check in tomorrow, see if you have any questions. The reason I say, see if you have any questions is because I know there's an 80% chance that she's not gonna click on those links and buy. Why is that? Because that's the statistics, it's human nature, okay? Now, a lot of people will follow up three times, four times, and then they let it go because they say, well, they're not interested, right? or they're a jerk, or the economy's bad, or their husband's a jerk, or they have no money, and we start creating stories that are not true in our heads. I want you guys to know 80% of people purchase between the seventh and 10th follow-up, which means we have to be prepared to follow up seven to 10 times, even with people who are super interested, okay? This is where people build the business or not. Now, how many of you guys, honestly, a little bit concerned about following up 10 times because I thought we didn't have to be annoying and I think I'm gonna be annoying now if I follow up 10 times. How many of you guys, let's, okay, just be honest. Okay, good. That just means you're my people. So, so here's what I want you guys to do. I'm gonna teach you how to follow up without being annoying. Okay, I'm gonna give you the two principles. Now, if you use my scripts, they already have these principles built in, but there are two principles for not being annoying when you're following up with somebody. The first one is, don't ask them to do anything, okay? Don't ask them to do anything. I had somebody on my, um, in my boot camp. I do boot camp every few months through TMZ. Ask me yesterday, when you're making, when you're calling people on the phone, do you leave voicemails? And I'm like, I don't call people on the phone. That's annoying. <laughs> I mean, if they're my family maybe, but no, I'll send them a text, right? It's important not to do things that bother people. How many of you guys, when your phone rings randomly, it's kind of annoying? Yeah, it, just send me a text. Why? So this is just understanding what, how people receive messages. So the first thing is don't ask them to do anything. Don't say, hey, you know, are you interested or not? Or are you gonna join my group? Or are you coming to my event? Like you have an RSVP, like don't ask anything of them. That's the first principle. The second principle is send a message that's short enough that they can read the whole thing without opening it. Okay, they need to be able to read the whole message without opening it. Why, why Eric? How many of you guys read messages without opening them? We all do it, why? Because we're busy at this moment. I mean, just think about the light. We always talk about, you know, people say, oh, um, I followed up with her three times and she's ghosting me. Oh, really? Is that what you think? Well, here's what really happened. You followed up and the dog was throwing up on the baby at that moment. She couldn't respond. You followed up again, she's driving her car. She meant to later, she got busy because her kids got home and her kids went nuts when it was her, right? Um, I mean, I've been in, I'm in Southern California. My kids haven't been in school since uh, for a full 12 months now. It is mayhem. Kids locked in their home for a year. It's mayhem at all times, at all times it's mayhem. So get it, like right? how many of you guys can relate to that? And you're mad that she's ghosting you. No, she's not. You, you followed up again a few days later. She was in the middle of hands deep in raw chicken preparing dinner. She's not going to pick up her phone and go in, right? This is our lives. But here's what is happening. She look, leans, hands in the chicken. She leans over to see who it is, right? The iPhone sees her face, opens the message. She sees the message a little bit. She got the message. We want to see them. They will always read the message. They might not always open it. They will always read it. And I want you guys to know that every time you send that message and it shows them that you care, that you're not being annoying, but you're being present. Over time, they will, they, they intend to respond. They intend to respond. Eventually they do. And you'll get a message that like, that's like this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I haven't responded. Thank you so much for staying in touch. Okay. Now, does this make sense? This works like clockwork, you guys. I'm telling you. Now, I just want to give you a concept on this. I want to give you a concept on this. How many of you guys truly believe you can help people through your business? Like, that's why you're here. Like, you're excited about it. Okay, good. So here's the, the truth. The comp plan, the products, to somebody who hasn't signed up, doesn't matter. It's not helping them, is it? The only thing that you have that can help them is your ability to keep following up with them. They asked for your help. Are you going to keep helping them? Does this make sense? People think following up is an annoying thing, but I want you to re reset your thinking on this. Following up is an act of love. 
Following up is an act of love. Write that down somewhere so you can remind yourself. Following up is an act of love. When you do this right, people will, will always think, thank you so much for staying in touch. I really appreciate it. Now, what happens is, as you ask them to introduce you to their friends and family, they know exactly how you're going to take care of them too. They're more likely to do it. Are you guys with me? So how does the Teamsy thing work? I know I gave you a lot of extra stuff tonight, right? You just wanted the meat and potatoes. You got all the gravy. But here's the thing. You get in there every day. You send messages to prospects, to customers, to consultants. You start conversations with them. Have great conversations. When appropriate, share. Put those people on the follow-ups list. People need to stay on that follow-ups list like forever. Some people will, will convert this week. Some people will take a year. How many of you guys took a long time? They had to follow up with you six months, a year. You guys know who you are. That was me. Some people take longer, but here's what I want you to know. If you're creating conversations every day in Teamsy, you will have a full follow-ups list that you can be, every day you'll have, you'll have you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes of follow-ups that are due. You message those people. Every month people will convert and you will see the consistent growth of your business. And you'll see, you know, you'll see at least those average results. What was it? 21 customers and nine recruits over 90 days. You'll see that kind of compounding in your business. It's just, this is how it works. And it, it's not just for this business, any business. I've taught this to every business owner ever. It works. It's about you being consistent, having the heart to serve, right? And being focused on let, not letting people fall through the cracks, caring enough not to do that. And you guys will do great. Does this make sense? Okay. Who's, I think, well, I think I've probably showed you enough. Why don't we open the floor to questions? If you guys have questions, you don't have to put it in the chat. You can just unmute your microphone and ask away. I'm happy to answer them that way too. I have a question. I can kick it, kick it off. Um, when I started doing Arbonne, I started by attacking my Facebook friends. Like that was where I started. Yeah. So I feel actually like I've gotten through everybody. I'm sure importing it and re going through that list is a helpful thing. Cause it's been a year since I've done that. And I'm sure there's follow-ups in there that I could do for Instagram. Um, in terms of importing from Instagram, it yeah. just imports your followers, right? Yep. Cause, um, the only issue I have with that is if we have people who follow us outside of where we sell our bond, um, I guess we just have to kind of vet them as we go. Yes. Question mark. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. uh, Facebook or well, Instagram, Facebook, the same company. Um, they okay. don't, Instagram doesn't give you the location information. You just basically get their name, their screen name. Right. Um, right. but as you're, as you're jamming through the list, you can have Instagram open on another tab and just take okay. a quick look type thing. Yeah. Okay. Now what I would say though, about your Facebook list is the first time you went through, you probably messaged them all about Arbonne, right? So what I would do right. is go back through that list with just a, hey, how the heck have you been? How's life message? Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And restart some of and, those conversations. Absolutely. Um, and then I guess with cold reach outs, I mean, if we feel as though, I know a lot of girls on here specifically do cold reach outs. So we're just going to be putting those people in manually as like, uh, okay, Maybe the prospects that Teamsy prompts aren't people that we want to reach out to that day because we have conversations on the go from just random people that we stumbled upon. We'll just enter them manually and it'll, it'll still add to the circle as somebody that we talked to that day. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, anybody that you look up and, and connect with or you add and connect with, it'll count towards your day. Um, okay. Yeah, and I mean, definitely, you know, the, the, con the idea is is if you're meeting somebody cold, your your goal is to build rapport with them, right? Build a relationship. With right. Them. And right. Um, but I would definitely recommend going through your warm your warm list first because you already have relationship, right? You don't have as far to go. Like right. my my yeah. thought on this is I think of it like a like a like fruit trees, right? You've got fruit trees that are full of fruit, you've got fruit trees that have green fruit, and you have fruit trees that are just starting to bud. Or maybe you have some right. with no buds, right? And so the, right. what Teamsy does is it, it cycles it through so that you spend more time around the tree that's full of fruit, right? That makes sense. But you're yes. still watering mm -hmm. and fertilizing the other trees because they'll bear fruit in the future. Does that make sense? 
So totally. for those of you guys who, who are doing a lot of cold messaging, there's nothing wrong with that, but make sure that you're not neglecting the people who already trust you. Even if they've told you like, I'm not in Arbonne, just work on, just stay connected with them because a lot of times that's a knee jerk reaction because they've been approached a lot, right? By yeah. everybody they know. And so they're just like, no, 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 no. So it's like, okay, well that's, I'm not really, I don't really care. Like I used to tell people, look, I don't really, I don't really care if you buy, if you, if you buy products for me or not, I just wanted to check in on you. Right. Um, so it's important that people know that, like, you know, I love what I do and I'm passionate about it. I think everybody should have these products, but that's, you know, like whether or not you're interested is fine with me. I just wanted to see how the heck are you type thing, because it kind of takes that worry away from the conversation. Does that make sense? But you have to believe that too, by the way, <laughs> you can't be lying about that. Yeah. You have to be okay with the fact that you're going to have conversations with people who aren't going to do anything right now. Okay, cool. Who else has a question? I have a question. Um, thanks so much for your time, Eric. Amazing. My I'm pleasure. absolutely loving, loving your platform. Um, can you import from LinkedIn? I didn't yes. see that. You can. Oh, amazing. Yeah. If you go to the FAQs on Help Center, there's a step by step. In there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. A um, couple things on the, when you're importing from multiple lists, Teamsy won't create duplicates if they have the same name. Um, but of course, if they have a different name, like if, if I'm Eric Johnson, MD on LinkedIn, then you might get a duplicate here and there. And we have a tool where you can merge those dupes. If you do get a few, um, you shouldn't get that many, but okay, same thing with, delete. or you can just delete the extra. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, deleting the extra is the easiest thing. But if you find that you logged a connect on both or something, you can you can merge them. But um, just so you guys know, we, we designed it so that it wouldn't re-import people. So um, that's why just real quick on this, if you're new to Teamsy, we want you to import your team first, then your customers, then any other list. The reason why is because from your back office, you'll get way more information. You'll get their addresses and their emails and everything, right? And they'll go into the right place in Teamsy. If you bring in Facebook first and your team's all on Facebook, it's not gonna bring them in again from the back office. Does that make sense? Cause they're already there, it's not gonna duplicate them. So do back office first, then Facebook. Um, if, you've already, uh, if you've already done it the other way and you've, it's no big deal, you, you could redo it if you need to. But if you have a small team or something, just put the, put the information. I had somebody one time have the team completely reverse all their imports. And then we found out that they only had one downline member and we were like, why didn't you just put that downline member's phone number and address in? You could have been done, but right? So, you know, we just wanna, we wanna help, but think logically. What other questions do we have? I, I have a question. I tried downloading from Instagram and when I went to click on the file, it said there was no file to upload. You got the, you got the export from Instagram? It sent to my email and then I went to open it and it said there was no file. Hold up, Hold. honey, I'm in the middle of a call, babe. I had that as well, Natasha. I think you have to unzip it. Okay. I'm in the middle of And I didn't have an unzip, like, tool. Here's the main I was you about. So I had to play around to get it to unzip and then I could find what it, it told you to look for like a specific code. That's Nora, my four-year-old. Okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> this is our life, right? Okay, so <laughs> she thinks it's the funniest thing. She's cracking up out in the hallway still. Okay, so um, I heard somebody say you got to unzip it. Facebook sends you a zip folder. I, I don't, I'm guessing probably Instagram does too. Um, you may have to click that to unzip it. Um, you may have to drag that Make sure you drag that uh, file from your email onto your desktop so that the so that Teams you can see it and find it. So those may be a couple of things. Um, if you can't figure it out, Natasha, Natasha, you asked me that question, right? If you can't figure it yeah. out, just forward that email to to support at teamsy.com and okay. say, can you put this in my account, please? <laughs> and we'll just put it in for you. Okay. Just so you guys know, yeah, on all the import stuff, like don't 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 struggle too long. There's a big uh, purple help button on the bottom right of every screen in Teams. You just click it and say, I need help with this. If you have already downloaded files from Facebook or somewhere or from the back office that you can't get in, just attach them to that message and our team will just do it for you. They'll be like, oh, it's done. It's good, ready to go. 
Um, because it's something that we know how to do. We do it hundreds of times a day and it's not a skill you really need. Like uploading to Teams is not a skill you need. Using Teams is a skill you need. Make sense? Um, Eric, hi, thanks. I have a question about um, the weighting of a client, like focusing on your top 10 clients and is there a way in Teamsy that it's weighted because not all client is the same. Yeah, we use the five-star ranking system. That's Oh, that's so not say. by dollar value, not by... No, no. Well, I mean, however you want to use it, you're, the people you think are the best people, you rate as five stars and then okay. you'll stay in touch with them more often. You can sort by that. On your, on your customer list. You can go on your customer list and sort by that if you want. Um, you can also, we also have a really, we didn't talk about this tonight, but we have a very simple tagging system that is like revolutionary for the business, right? Tagging things. So you could tag certain categories of customers if you want, like these are my over 10,000 tag customers, whatever. And then when you click that tag, you get the list. The tags are awesome. You, you know, um, I did a full training on tagging. It's in our help center. But for example, I would tag every product someone buys. I would put that as a tag. So then, you know, like if you want to see everybody who bought this product, you click on the tag, you get all the lists. If you're doing events, how many of you guys ever do events? You know, I would do a tag for that event date and everybody I invited, I would tag, I invited. Everybody that came, I would tag that came. Like those are all, that's all data points that you can keep in your Teamsy beyond just the power hour that I showed you tonight, which is really powerful. Um, you know, you get a new product launch. That's when you want to pull those tag lists and work those lists and tell people about the new product launch. So um, it becomes really helpful to, to do some of that, Terry, too. So you can use the five-star ranking. You can use tags. There's different ways you can create groups and priority. Okay, that's really helpful because I think that's one of the things is sometimes people don't even know what their top 10 clients are and then you lose them and you wonder why your business is dropping. And so that dollar value to me is it's really huge. Yeah. That's great. Um, and also, if you, if, you can also import that data into the notes. If, it, if that's something that the back office displays, you'll be able to import that into notes so that you can have it all in the notes for people. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was saying, I don't have a question, but I wanted to say thank you so much. And it is, I've been using it for over a month and I, um, I just I did my subscription, but I did wanted to tell everybody that one thing I found was so amazing was your emails that you send out. And then um, when you get these emails, like the tips and the emails, I will be honest. And I saw the first email, I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Like I already know what I'm doing, but I read it. And then I looked forward to all the emails that you send out because um, it's just great information. So don't, don't do that. Don't ignore the emails. You guys read them and then go through that help center and explore the help center because there's just so many added things. Like just even what you said right now, about the tag, but I didn't know that. So I'm excited to go and watch it, but I just, I've been in the business for nine years and I want to just give you like the most massive shout out because this for me has been like game changing and I love it so much. So good on you. It's amazing. I love it. Melanie, send me a message on Facebook and we'll put you on our site. It'd be great. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> um, I one last question I had for you. Um, we have um, a preferred client program and every um, there's a report we can run in our back office that says there's a free gift waiting or it's the renewal month. When I was loading the data in, I couldn't quite figure out what space to select uh, that would notify me about that. Um, I don't know if that's something you do in development or you're considering doing in development, um, customizing a bit more to different companies. Yeah. But if that's something you're considering or you're tabling, um, I would love to be able to champion that for us and uh, send an email to whoever the point person is just so that we could maybe capture that kind of stuff in the in team Z. Yeah. So that kind of integration really comes after we um, start working directly with corporate. Um, at this point, we don't really have a relationship with corporate, just with folks like you guys who are using Teamsy. So um, what you would have to do now, Christy, is pull that report and then go into Teamsy and log it in Teamsy as you're messaging people, which, which, is, which works fine. But of course, you know anything can be integrated down the road. And of course, we'd love to work with corporate. So the, the way it works with corporate is um, we work with, there's several companies that we've worked with uh, where we've really, they've really 
taken us on board and supported us and, and introduced us to their field and they've gotten tremendous results. Um, but it really only happens after a bunch of leaders in the field go to corporate and say, we're using Teamsy and you need to work with Teamsy. We love Teamsy. Um, when I'm, when I connect with corporate, they're just like, no, thanks go away. We're not interested. So, um, so anyways, bottom line is we'd love to work with them, but the, the way they get interested in Teamsy is when all of you tell them to be interested in Teamsy and, um, okay, well, we'll to send it up to, uh, we'll send it up to our, um, our EMVP that has a voice with corporate for sure. Yeah. Um, one of the EMVPs on this page actually said as uh, direct is direct to her. So Al, um, Al has a big voice in corporate Canada too. So um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. We have a CRM right now that nobody uses. So <laughs> I, know. I know. Well, we, you guys noticed that we misspelled, some of you may have noticed we misspelled your name in our Teams you dropped down. And that's because- I noticed. <laughs> that's on purpose. That's because it's marked and we didn't want to, um, we're, we're not trying to step on any toes. We know they have their own CRM. It's just, you guys know that it's customized for you to use type thing. Um, we're obviously not, uh, we're, we're not endorsed or anything. So, so we did that on purpose. We, for actually for the past three years, we haven't offered customized version for Arbonne because um, when Arbonne launched their CRM, they sent us a letter and said, you can't even use our name. You can't even write our name, which by the way, I'm grateful for because I didn't even know that was a thing. And so I, uh, I trademarked Teamsy the same way. So, you know, it's really, it's, you guys have amazing lawyers because now if somebody writes a, a thing like I hate Teamsy, I can say, you're not allowed to use the word Teamsy in a sentence. <laughs> it's my mark. <laughs> you can't use it in a sentence. So you'll have to find another way to communicate that. Not that we get very many negative reviews, but so anyways, um, yeah, we would, we, we know that you guys built one. We're, again, we're not trying to step on any to toes. Our goal is to help you guys be successful. We know that we know that when people use Teamsy, they get great results. So the companies that we've worked with, usually it's the sales team. You know, the people who care about how much you guys do are the ones who are excited about Teamsy because they're like, hey, people are using this thing and they're, they're making me look good. So that's good. So we'll be happy. If they want to talk about it, we'll be happy about uh, seeing what we can do. Um, was this training valuable so far tonight? Yeah. So I mean, yes, I'm open. Absolutely. To, I would do trainings for Arbonne Corporate all the time. If they wanted me to, I would come in and do trainings. So we've got a lot to offer um, beyond just the software, you know, because we're, we've been teaching people how to build their business for so many years. Yeah, I think, right. I think there's a few other call or teams too that we're going to try to get organized to do team calls with you that weren't able to do this one with us. Um, and Alex can get in touch with you after this call too. Yeah, she's giving a thumbs up. So she'll get on that. Okay, great. And I, and I also- right. and I have a- Oh, go ahead. Quick, quick question. If, if you have a prospect and it becomes a client, uh, then you can adjust that on Teams, right? Yeah, let me show you how easy it yep. is real quick. So if I'm, if I'm talking to Jay right here, um, she's a prospect. Let's say she becomes a customer. I would just click on it. And now she's changed. If she joins the team, I would click on consultants, personally sponsored. Simple. And this, and this ability to change the member type is everywhere. If I'm on the dashboard and I'm, and I'm talking to Jackie, she's the first person on my list. And I'm like, Jackie's on my team. She shouldn't be on prospects. I can just go to details, click consultant, and she disappears, goes to the correct list. Make sense? And I'm gonna show you one more place. Awesome. Thank you. When, yeah. If you're on the team page and you've got like your full list and you're like, oh man, I imported everybody as a prospect. Then we have this cool thing, this little menu here with these three dots. You can do a couple of things. You can go to type mode and that shows up for the whole list. So you can scroll the list and just, okay, he's supposed to be there. You could do some cleanup. This also is how you do your ranking. I didn't show you this, but if you put it in rank mode, now you can jam down your list and you can just click. Everybody's gonna be three stars by default. So most people you won't have to rank because most of your list will be three. But when you come, oh, Emerson, best friend, five stars, right? Make sense? So, so when you first, uh, when you guys first start Teams and you get in there, these tools are going to be how you clean up that list when you first get into rank mode and type mode so that you can get everything put together. I think of it like this. It's like moving into your dream home, right? How many of you guys have like a dream home in mind? 
and with like a dream kitchen. I mean, I'm a I'm a big kitchen person. We we just bought we just bought our dream home two years ago, and it's like one huge kitchen room, right? The kitchen's in the middle of the main room, and all the kids are running around. My kids actually ride scooters in the living room, like so. Just to give you an idea, like that's what we wanted. Like we just wanted all the mayhem in one place, and um, so if you picture your dream kitchen, sorry, that was, I got off on a chase to rabbit hole there. If you picture your dream kitchen and you move into it, you got to unpack all the dishes and put them away, right? And that's what that's what I want Teamsy to be like. It's like your dream kitchen. You're moving in. You got to unpack all the dishes. That's getting your list organized, your rankings done. Because if you don't do it. If you don't unpack the dishes, when it comes time to make breakfast, you got to dig through a box and find a fork. You got to dig through another box, find a frying pan. Imagine if you had to do that every time you had to cook a meal. That's what it's like throwing contacts into a CRM like Teamsy and not organizing it, not getting ready to work with it. Does that make sense? So there's a little bit of work. I want you guys to picture this, like you should be able to do your uploads in like 30 minutes or less, you're done. And then, you know, you're hanging out, whatever, chilling with your spouse, you got your phone or your laptop and you're just like working that teamsy list, getting the five stars, the four stars done, just a little bit of work. And then you've got everything unpacked and you're ready to just do power hours. Make sense? Okay. Um, I saw a question here about, can you import contacts from your phone? And yes, you can. If you go to the help center and teams, you'll get the step-by-step on how to do that. Okay. Last one, let's do one more and then I'll send you guys on your way. Any more? Okay, let me give you some quick action steps because I know we've lost a few people, but for those of you guys who are hanging on to the very end, I'll give you the action steps. First off, go start your free trial. That's a no-brainer. Go get started with Teamsy. Try it out. Um, but I highly recommend you get success partners to do the true free trial with, right? So get a success partner or two. Groups of three are the best, right? Um, two people can support each other, but a what is it, a, a three, three corded rope is the strongest, right? So success partners, what are you gonna do with a success partner? You say, hey, look, let's do this teamsy thing together. Let's try it out. What's your goal? Here's my goal. Like have a quick Zoom or something, share your goals with each other. And then what I would do is every day when you finish your power hour in teamsy, it doesn't have to get to 100%, just do it the best you can, screenshot it and send it to your partner or partners. Like done with mine. You guys will get so much out of that free trial. Now look, it's going to be really annoying when you get that text and you have not done your power hour. You're going to be so irritated with those people, but it will drive you to do it. And you'll realize I could do this in like 20 minutes. I can't even tell you when I was working on, now I'm not in network marketing. I just want you guys to know I'm not in network marketing. Once Teamsy took off, it was like I had to go do Teamsy. But when I was and my success partner would message me at like nine o'clock at night and I'm done, I think I'm done for the day and I haven't done my power hour. I would be so irritated, but I would always do it because I couldn't let her have sent me that and not respond. Does that make sense? So success, success partners are huge. You don't need to say, we'll be success partners for life to say, hey, let's do this free trial together and try it out. See if we like each other as success partners, okay? And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys a challenge. I'm gonna give you the Teamsy five-day challenge. I just gave it a name, Teamsy five-day challenge. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to use Teamsy for five days in a row. Okay, so get it all set up, do all that stuff, then use it for five days in a row in a row, right? And each day I want you to message 20 people. And it can be any mix of prospects, customers, consultants, I don't care. Message 20 people a day for five days through Teams. Just use my scripts, don't overthink it. Just use script number one, change the name, go. Because the reason I want you to do that is it will change the way you look at your business forever. The response, first of all, some of you are going to be cursing me like, why do you make me do this? So I got 90 responses. How am I going to keep up with the, all these conversations? You will never listen to your excuses again or, or to the excuses of your team. Well, nothing's happening. It's a slow time, right? Or whatever. I've already gone through my warm market. What do I do now? All these things that I hear people say. You message 100 people in five days, you're going to get tons of conversations going. It's going to make you always remember that you can create momentum at any time in your business. Does this make sense? So I really want you guys to do that. Who's in for the five-day challenge? Public accountability. See that? Public account. You're more likely to do it now because you raised your hand. Isn't that cool? And people saw you do it. So you guys will have a great experience in those five-day challenges. So that's it. Those are, go get your free trial. Get some success partners. 
five-day challenge. If you're already paying for Teamsy, you can still get success partners. You can still do the five-day challenge, okay? You guys with me? All right. I am going to uh, send you guys off. I just want to say thank you so much for uh, having me tonight. It was a pleasure to share my heart with you guys, and I'm excited to welcome all of you to our Teamsy family. So thank you so much. God bless you, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you, Eric. My pleasure. And I'll send you that recording tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Please send that to me. That's great. That's perfect. Thanks, oh, guys. Send me, a friend, send me a friend request so that I can message it to you. Okay. Just Eric Johnson on Facebook. Yeah. You should be able to find me. It's Eric, uh, just Teamsy Eric Johnson. You should find me pretty quick. Okay. I'll send you a friend request now. That's perfect. Okay. Have a great night, everyone. Awesome.